Through the Sandman and Circuit Group. So we'll see if that really is the root of it someday. Well, actually, if we do, we've solved the world's hardest math problem. So, <laughs> well, we probably will. Mm. I mean, why not? We haven't killed anybody yet, Which right? Which has already been proven. They were pointing that. Ah, <laughs> ah, no. It has been proven, <laughs> but, Molly, but. Yes, yes. Because. The proof that we have involves all of modern math. We know that it can't be the proof that Fermat meant to write in the margin. Oh. So what we're looking for is Fermat's original proof. Which would be simpler. That ha would be simpler oh. and I believe intuitive and that would have evaded the brightest mathematical minds of our time. Oh. Not that it's easy to do that, but dude, if you're if you got a crazy brain like we all do from watching television and and MTV and <laughs> animes, you got a new kind of brain and you can think <laughs> about things differently. So let's see if we can approach this. And the goal will be to, to dig into this and try to understand as much as we can visually what's really going on when we add two squares. Okay. So this is what's going on when we add two squares. Here's A, here's B. They fit together to make C. If you can dig a chunk out of one of those squares, we call it Q, and redistribute that chunk to P and R, and then it fills in as a, as a to make the C square. So Q is where the two squares overlap. So you only need one layer there. You take off that second layer and you stick it where P and R go and you come up with C. All right. Now, what is, given, given that 3, 4, 5 works, it certainly does, what is the next value of Q that has the possibility of working? And the answer is this. Well, let's add one to it and see what happens. If we add one to our Q, to, to, to our side of Q, we get nine. And nine is an odd number and there's no possible way that we could split it up so that it fits into P and R because we got too many cubes or too few. But if we build it out twice so that we've added two to our Q value, well, that will be splittable into, into, into two. That will be an even number and it will be addable onto R and P and we'll be able to get a new set of numbers. So let's, so let's go from our old Q value of four. Let's expand it out to its next possible value. That's our old Q value of two. Q squared value of four. Expand it out to the next possible usable value of Q, which is 4. So let me clean this up a little bit. We're going to build a new Pythagorean triple based on a Q value of 4. Okay. What it implies to have, to have the side of Q be 4 is this. First of all, you have to increase your A out by 2 in order to expand your, that Q. So, so we no longer have 3 down here for A. We now have 5. Okay? So our new A value is 5. Now what do we know about our new B value? We'll skip that for a second. We'll go right to our C value. Our C value is going to be the the size of the whole square. A is, our new A value is 5. Our new Q value is 4. And what we know we have to do is be able to gouge the Q, the area of Q out of the A square and redistribute it where the P and the R go. 
So Q is 16. Let's take 8 here. And let's take 8 here. So we had, we had uh, 5 plus 8. So that gives us a C value of 13. Oh, I'm off the charts. 8, 5, and this whole value is 13. C is 13. And so what's our B value? Well, B is this square here, right? So it's is C minus 1. C minus 1. So let's just double check it. Is 5, 12, and 13 a Pythagorean triple? Well, first of all, you can look at it and see, yeah, we can chunk up this, this 8, fold it onto itself, chunk up this 8, fold it onto itself, make a new Q that fills in the gap here on the A. There, yeah, yeah, you can visualize that, yeah, it is. But you can also do the math. Uh, a squared, 5 squared is 25. A, B, C. 25. Uh, B is 12 squared is uh, 144. And C is 13 squared, which is, it's 169. Yay! So that's our new triple that we generated, which has a different shape from the original. Oh,